Good morning, everyone. Can you guys hear me out there in the back? Not really. Sandra, can you turn the microphone up or not? Okay. Um, today I'm here to sort of introduce you to the book Fast Food Nation. And uh, the book is somewhat complex, um, to say the least. And so some of the things that I actually wanted to talk about when introducing you to this book are some of the themes that I think I'm seeing in the book. Um, one of them is that obesity is at epidemic proportions in the United States. We'll actually go through and look to see how that's being measured and how we're coming up with that uh, conclusion. Also, that the food we eat reveals who we are as a society. Um, I think that's one of the main, main points that um, Eric is making in his book while he's um, expounding upon all the different things that go into the development of this fast food culture that we have. And then also, with knowledge comes the ability to choose. Um, if we have this information, if we read these books, um, we're able to make better choices. We're able to move forward, um, form a better society, more informed decisions in what we do. Uh, we saw this when we read um, the stories about Vietnam. You know, the point, or one of the points that we saw there was that disinformation um, caused us to do various and make different choices. So if we have more information, the more information that we have, the better off we are. So when we're looking at this book, um, I would suggest that you take each chapter as sort of like a mini book. I know this book is full of statistics. Um, there are a few short stories in the book, but really it's just full of facts and information that the author is putting in there so that you can have all this information to make your choices. And so I would suggest just um, for each one of the chapters, try and figure out what the thesis of that chapter is. And then look for three different, at least three different ways in which he supports his thesis. And then also, while you're reading, ask different questions. Because any piece of work that you have, even if it's something that's like a documentary or a history text, it's not objective. It's going to be subjective. The author is going to be putting his own information there, in there, his own biases in the work. And so ask questions like, why does the author mention this? Um, in some of our readings for today, a lot of mention um, is made of the religion of the people who started these fast food corporations. Why does the author include that? Um, what is the author's intent in offering this information? Is he trying to persuade you in a certain way? Is he trying to convince you of something? Um, and so from those, develop your own thoughts and ideas from what you have, um, what you're reading in the text. Now, I just wanted to go through, say knowledge is choice. That's one of the theses that I have here. Um, and I want to give a little bit of support for that from Homer the poet. I have a quote, uh, quote from Homer. And, um, well, not that one. Uh, Homer the poet, he was a Greek. He wrote things like the Iliad and the Odyssey. And um, if you've ever seen the Odyssey or Ulysses um, on TV, um, he's the one who came up with those stories. Um, this is the Latin translation of what he wrote, Sampere Alde. And what it basically means is dare to be wise. So as we're a community of learners here, as we're moving forward, going through all of these different books, looking at who we are, discovering our identities, discovering the identity of our society, we're daring you to be wise. Next person I'd like to quote is Socrates. You know, I've had uh, some students come up to me and say, why do we have to learn all this stuff? It has nothing to do with my major. Socrates says that the unexamined life is not worth living. And in fact, he um, said that quote when he was about to be put to death for teaching students to value things like virtue, moderation, instead of things like property, money, and self-gain. He was actually put to death for teaching values. And so he says that the unexamined life is not worth living, and so if he has to shut up and not teach values and moderation, he would rather die 
and continue living. So I think that's what we're doing here in CORE as well. We're moving forward, we're gaining information so that we can make choices. And then I thought I'd use a modern context. Has anybody seen the Animaniacs? Am I dating myself? I love the Animaniacs. Dot from the Animaniacs, I remember watching this in high school and this quote has stuck with me since high school, some 15 years ago. Education is the progressive realization of our own ignorance. And so we saw that actually in one of our earlier lectures. The more we learn, the more questions we have, the more we seek to understand. And so education is the progressive realization of our own ignorance. So let's look at obesity. That was one of the things that I said we'd look at. Um, let's just look at the term obese. How is it defined? Well, as an adjective, it's just defined as grossly fat or overweight. I looked that up on Marion Webster's website. Um, but clinically, um, the way that the doctor would use that word is it's having a body mass index that is greater than 30. And so what is this body mass index? Um, you can see there, and I, I won't read it to you, but it was developed as sort of an average of just standard body masses that you would have. And um, now it is slightly skewed. I'm sure some of you have heard critiques of the body mass index, because if you're like this weightlifter or football player, your mass, your weight actually is going to be higher um, because you know, muscle weighs more than fat does. But this is just an average, and they're using it for statistics and averages. And so when we're looking at you know, how obese the United States is, and we're looking at um, you know, American citizens, we're looking at the average. We're generalizing an entire group of people, so it may not directly apply to you, but it does apply to the average of the American citizen. Um, and so the body mass calculations here. And this is how it's actually figured out. And you see here, if I can, is that laser? Yeah. You can see here, I have three different straight lines going across. This right here is if your body mass index is above this line, you're obese. This one right here, um, you're just overweight. And then this one right here, you're, just, you're normal if you're in between this, these sections right here. And then if you're down here, you're underweight. And so what I wanted to do is actually, I wanted everyone in lecture to go ahead and figure out what their body mass index is. So I think this is going to be the first ever in a core lecture. Take out your cell phones if they have calculators. <laughs> Don't text message. If they have calculators, take out your cell phones. If you have a calculator, go ahead and take out a calculator. 